Uh, nice to meet you all. Uh, as Kirsten mentioned, I'm Casey Sharpio. Uh, my role specifically with the ACA is the Vice President of Business Expansion, and I'll get into the differences between our various departments. But, uh, and, and I apologize, this uh, presentation doesn't cover some of this. It's more, um, a little more granular getting into the specifics of the incentives that we administer. But I wanted to start kind of at the 30,000 foot level. Uh, if you don't mind, and I'll just give you an overview uh, of the ACA, uh, our mission, uh, and what we're trying to accomplish it, and how we're broken out to accomplish that. So, uh, and I know some of you are familiar with it, some of you may, may not be, but uh, the Department of Commerce was dissolved as part of a Arizona competitiveness package, and with that, the Arizona Commerce Authority was born. Uh, and this happened about a year and a half ago. Um, and we are essentially the economic development uh, for the state of Arizona, uh, much the same way GPEC is uh, the economic development organization for Greater Phoenix, and then different municipalities have their economic development organization. So we represent the entire state. Uh, our mission is to create jobs and capital investment in Arizona and do that while increasing the average wage in Arizona. Uh, so we are measured on those, those goals. We report to a private board, even though we are funded by the legislature, so uh, we are stewards of taxpayer dollars. Uh, however, we've got some, some great local Arizona CEOs that represent the entire state uh, helping guide us, and we give them a quarterly report on, on what we're doing. Um, so getting a, a little more uh, a level deeper, the way that we're going about the job creation and the capital investment and assisting the companies here uh, is really threefold. Uh, the first is business attraction, which is a very typical model. We have uh, a team dedicated to essentially recruiting companies from outside of Arizona and get them to move either their headquarters or some part of their operation to Arizona. Uh, they're armed with really the, the same programs that I'm armed with, which is uh, the business expansion department. Uh, the primary difference between attraction and expansion is all the companies that I work with are already located in Arizona. They already have a presence here, and we want to help them increase that presence. Uh, the third department we have um, in, in business development is uh, an innovation team. And these, these people are specifically dedicated to startup businesses, new businesses, uh, the creation of business. And we kind of, the dividing line on that, and I know some of you guys are involved in the startup, is uh, are you making money or not? <laughs> so a lot of the creation clients that we deal with are pre-revenue. Uh, they're trying to fund their company, whether it's uh, debt financing or equity financing, uh, or maybe it's just creating the documents to create this company. Uh, and we've got a lot of great resources uh, on our website. I think you mentioned uh, you went to the website. That's actually the, the small business services portion of our website is the most visited uh, portion of the, the ACA site, uh, and it's azcommerce.com. Um, so really those, those three areas we think focus on, on all the businesses. Within or across all of those, we're focused on four main areas. Uh, aerospace and defense, which is a, a huge part of the Arizona economy. Um, and probably the biggest area is science and technology. Uh, that actually covers quite a bit uh, from bioscience to advanced manufacturing, semiconductors, um, and, and so forth. Uh, and then we have renewable uh, energy, uh, not just solar, but really looking at some other technologies there as well. Uh, and then innovation and w what technologies are we working on creating uh, that are going to help us move them forward. So um, moving a little bit off of that and kind of into my day-to-day uh, -day operations, uh, I'm really looking for companies that have the ability to grow in Arizona. 
Uh, and we, we partner with uh, you know, banks. A lot of commercial bankers are looking for these companies, commercial real estate brokers, uh, accountants. There's consultants out there that help companies um, apply for some of the programs that we have. So we really try to spread that network far and wide because we have a fairly limited department. Uh, and the thing I always tell these people is if you know somebody and they're investing in their company and they're hiring people, send them our way because they're probably eventually going to be there. Uh, at the end of the day, the ACA administers uh, a lot of the financial incentives uh, that companies can take advantage of, whether they're relocating or expanding. Um, but that's not the only way we want to help them. Uh, really, that assistance can be financial assistance, uh, and I'll go through some of the financial programs in just a second. Uh, it can be technical assistance, uh, which Kirsten's going to uh, expand on. There may not be money involved, but if you need to hire people, and it's a lot of people, and it's going to involve sifting through a lot of resumes and trying to get a lot of people interviews, workforce uh, development and the relationships we have there uh, can help a company put together a job fair. Uh, we're currently working uh, with a pharmaceutical company that laid off 500 employees. Uh, and at the same time, I have a company that is uh, consolidating their operations and they're going to be hiring about 210 people. So we've reached out to the, comp to the employees that were laid off. We're going to hopefully host a job fair and connect them uh, with this new company that needs to fill 200 positions. Uh, so that's an example of the technical assistance uh, that we can provide, and it might also be ca categorized as strategic partnerships. And again, uh, there's a lot of resources that, that we come across. Um, someone alluded to manufacturing, and say there's a company that wants to expand their manufacturing op operation, uh, maybe they have a supplier where they need to get aluminum, uh, and I'll give you a specific example. There's a company that makes aluminum pallets, uh, and they actually are getting their aluminum now from Hydro Aluminum, which is a recycler of aluminum, and it's located out in the West Valley uh, of Phoenix. Um, but that company is now expanding because they're moving a fabrication department uh, into a new facility adjacent to the one they have. So making those connections so that we can take one company we're working with that might be a new business, connect them with a much more established business that's expanding their operations, and making that connection is, is hopefully what we can bring to our clients. And that's kind of an example of the strategic partnerships. So um, with that, and I'll, I'll try to be very brief on this, but um, the financial uh, assistance that we can provide, uh, some of that's grants. Uh, and again, I'll get into a little more detail. We have a job training um, refundable grant uh, that I'll expand on. Some of them are tax credits, uh, whether it's for research and development, creating quality jobs, uh, qualified facilities, which is specifically related to manufacturing, uh, reclassification of property. Uh, we have some private activity bonds uh, that are uh, really large-scale dollars and just a, a means of financing. Uh, and then we have some other financing tools as well. Um, I'm going to skip over some of this, but, um, you know, uh, not to go into this too much, more of what the uh, business attraction team does is really promote Arizona's uh, pro-business uh, environment and the, the tax incentives that we have. We have very very uh, pro-business climate. Uh, I'll tell you that most of the companies that are relocating here are relocating from California. Uh, that's where most of our, our inbound traffic is from. Uh, and California has a lot of regulation, <laughs> a lot of taxes. Uh, I think somebody from Department of Revenue told us yesterday that there's 20,000 different tax, tax levels uh, when it comes to property tax in California. So we're definitely trying to streamline uh, some of that. Um, these are some of the, the workforce numbers. Uh, obviously, we have got a great workforce, and I think uh, Kirsten can expand on that uh, in her section. Um, 
some of the other low cost of doing business, but um, getting into some of the programs that we have, uh, and I think this will start with some of the grants. Uh, Fast Grant is really the, the very basis of uh, starting a new business. It's a grant that they can apply for up to $7,500, and really uh, that is to really cover the cost of professional consulting. Uh, so I had, a, uh, I had a company that makes uh, flexible plastic packaging. Are you guys familiar with Capri Sun uh, and the, some of the applesauce that comes, tube of toothpaste, uh, is all considered flexible plastic packaging. Uh, that stuff's not recyclable. Uh, however, there's a company in Brazil that found a way to recycle that stuff and make uh, chairs kind of like this and desks for schools uh, out of the material that they could recycle. Uh, so it was a very specific purpose, but she wanted to bring a consultant up from Brazil to try to see what's it going to take to create a recycling facility uh, in Arizona, what would they need to do to meet the environmental specifications that the United States has versus Brazil? And that's really something that Fast Grant would be kind of perfect for. Uh, kind of the next level under the innovation is the Innovation Accelerator uh, Fund program. This is a, a loan participation, uh, and it was started in Michigan. Michigan, I, I don't know if, how familiar you guys are, during the the recession was absolutely crushed because of the automobile industry. And they basically, the state wanted to get the banks to actually loan money because all the businesses were hurting. They needed to kind of float until they could get the next check in. Uh, and the, the federal government took this program and distributed money to every state. Uh, Arizona got 18 million uh, and really we can go uh, partner with a bank, uh, and if there's a business that, you know, it's not the perfect business that a bank wants to loan a million dollars to or $500,000 to, uh, they're just not really comfortable with it. We can come in with up to 50% of that loan amount. So let's say if it's $500,000, uh, we can bring $250,000 to the table uh, to partner with the bank so that they're only exposed for really half of the amount and hopefully free up some of that money to get it in the hands of small business uh, and startup businesses so that uh, they can get the capital they need to get up and running or expand. Um, Innovation Challenge is uh, really a contest for, again, new businesses. You've got a new business idea, got a business plan, put it together, submit it into this challenge. We have about 300 companies every year. Uh, we'll narrow it down to six and make awards of up to $250,000. And we do that twice a year. So uh, I know somebody mentioned um, uh, a startup venture. Um, this, is the, this is the kind of thing where you can really enter this and, and maybe get some, uh, some startup money for that company. Uh, and I will tell you that the feedback that you get from some of the entrepreneurs that are on the judging panel uh, is invaluable, and it's helped, uh, it's helped shape a lot of new companies. Um, the, this is the state export program, uh, which is the, the STEP step. Uh, if you have a company that is trying to get into a foreign market, um, whether it be Mexico, Canada, Israel, Turkey, Brazil, uh, they have reimbursable grants. They can help set you up at the local government. They can put you in contact with potential clients. Um, another great example of technical assistance. Um, uh, we've got a commercial industrial solar um, tax credit. Um, there's also a renewable tax credit. These are really focused around renewable energy. Uh, one of them, uh, and specifically the commercial industrial, is for companies that are putting solar on their facilities, uh, they can get uh, part of that uh, installed cost um, rebated. Uh, the other one, which I'm not sure is in here, but is more for if you're creating renewable energy. So if there's a solar plant, um, there's a completely different tax incentive for them. Um, Healthy forest, which I don't think is going to apply very much in <laughs> Maricopa. Um, 
Job training, uh, this is the most popular uh, of the ACA programs. This is a grant, so uh, if you're a new business and you're hiring, um, let's call it 20 workers, and they meet the uh, average county wage, uh, they, they're eligible uh, to recover 75% of the training cost. So if you're gonna send them to get trained, then it's gonna cost $1,000 per employee, so you're into it for $20,000 for those 20 employees. Well, you can get 15,000 of that back uh, through the Job Training Refundable Grant Program. Uh, and uh, this program is phenomenal, and it's designed to do one thing, and that's increase the skill level of the workforce in Arizona. Uh, and we really wanna provide an incentive to the new employees, so if you have uh, 50 people working at a company and they're gonna hire 20, those 20 employees are considered net new uh, and are eligible for 75% uh, reimbursement. The 50 employees are considered incumbent employees uh, and those are uh, refunded up to 50%. So there is a distinction uh, between those two uh, and really the incentive being on new hires. Any questions so far? I know I'm kind of burning through this a little bit. Um, military reuse zone, not one of the more, probably the least popular ACA incentive, as well as. What is that? Is it to hiring vets? Or? Uh, no, military reuse zone is really where there was a military property. Uh, there's only oh, a. Like base closures. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, Williams uh, and then Goodyear. I think it's military reuse zone, so there's very few areas that qualify for that. Um, private activity bonds are more, it's kind of an alternate financing mechanism really done uh, a lot of times in conjunction with the municipality. Um, and I gotta be honest, I uh, don't have a whole lot of knowledge on that because it's not commonly used. Um, this is the other uh, big one, is the quality jobs tax credit. Uh, again, if going back to kind of how I started this, if you're going to hire new jobs and you're going to invest capital, uh, there's benefits that can help you. <coughs> Specifically, Quality Jobs addresses both of those. Uh, in metro areas, it's uh, a $5 million capital investment and 25 new jobs, which can be uh, a challenge for companies to meet both of those. But in rural areas, it's a $1 million capital investment and five new jobs. And if you hit that criteria, you can receive $9,000 per employee uh, in tax credits. So if you hire 10 people, that's $90,000 in tax credits that you can receive. It's over the course of three years. Um, but again, we're trying to incentivize that capital investment and uh, new, um, new jobs. Qualified facilities was created as a way to address not having to meet both those criteria on capital investment and, and jobs. Uh, so this one, uh, and I must stipulate, is purely for manufacturing facilities. And I know someone mentioned uh, a manufacturing facility. Uh, but again, this is a tax credit that takes into account uh, the lesser of the capital investment or the job creation. And the capital investment, I think, is 10%. Um, so if it's gonna be a million dollars, that tax credit would be $100,000 uh, or $20,000 per new job. So if there's 10 new jobs and a million dollars in capital investment, the 10 new jobs would equal 200,000 uh, based on 20 per new job. However, the capital investment would be 10% of the million, so it would be 100,000, and we take the lesser of those two. Uh, so in, in this is, instance, even if you don't meet the minimum criteria for quality jobs, which was the previous one, uh, there's still a way to take advantage of a, of a tax credit. But again, it is, uh, it is manufacturing specific. Uh, renewable energy tax credit I uh, touched on, and then research and development. Um, if you're spending a lot of money on research and development, there's a, a, a tax credit that you're eligible for. The interesting thing about this one is it's refundable. So uh, 
it, you can, if you don't have a tax liability, you don't owe the state as much as uh, uh, the tax credit is, uh, you can get some of that refunded back to you. Uh, the most interesting part of this, and I would encourage you, uh, anyone that's engaging in research and development, is to get in touch with the university. Uh, I know that U of A and ASU are actively looking for projects. Uh, again, going to the strategic partnerships and what we do, really wanna uh, try to connect companies to the universities because uh, it really increases the percentage of expenses that are eligible for the R&D tax credit if they're done in conjunction with uh, a state university. Um, yeah, ANGEL, uh, so the ANGEL program, um, this is more for small businesses, startup businesses, but if you can get a business certified uh, as eligible for ANGEL investment, uh, when that business goes out and solicits people to invest in their company, uh, those investors can receive a tax credit on their investment uh, in, in the approved companies. Uh, it's it's uh, something where the company has to have at least two full-time employees, and the company has to be certified first. Uh, so if you're gonna start a new company and you're gonna be soliciting investors, it can be a true uh, advantage if you can get certified for angel investment, then when you go out, receive that investment, those people can receive a, a tax credit of I think 30, 5%, yeah. Um, and again, there's some minimum qualifications, but uh, again, really trying to encourage people to invest in small business. So you do something like this and get some equity investors, use the uh, accelerator fund if you need to get a loan, uh, and you can really accumulate some seed money for a company uh, to get started. So um, I know that was... Uh, I'm sorry? Not professional services for the angel program. Not really. Engage in qualified activities. It does, uh, yeah, no. Hmm. I guess so. I didn't know that was a stipulation, did you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and um, so what. I brought with me, uh, and you're more than welcome to uh, pick this up on the way out, is uh, this is just a simple one sheet, kind of front and back. It mirrors what's on uh, azcommerce.com, and this is just a summary of all the incentives we have. So most of what was in this presentation uh, is on here. Uh, and again, I would encourage you to take this, see what might be applicable, but more importantly, if there's a company that you work with or, or know of, please feel free to send them our way and we'll get them in touch with the appropriate department uh, and try to help guide them through this because there's a lot of information in there. Uh, we have program administrators that go through and administer these, uh, that work with the Department of Revenue, that work with uh, Treasury, Department of Economic Security, whatever it may be. Um, and if they're creating jobs and capital investment, most likely we can help them. Uh, we're happy to do so. So I'll leave these uh, on the door on the way out and open it up to any questions. And if you go back to those lines, uh, part of what we're talking about um, the five million versus the one million um, and basically find it as metro versus uh, rural or urban versus rural. Quality jobs. Yeah. Uh, so um, my question would be: Is it, what is the, what is the is, is the Arizona Commerce Authority's definition of metro versus rural? Is there is there a population of the city or surrounding areas? Is it a definition of the county? How does it play out? Uh, it is, uh, I think, based on population. So each year, it comes out. Uh, I think we get the list, and uh, we've got a number of locations that are in Metro Phoenix uh, that are determined to be rural areas based on the population numbers. I th is Tolleson one of them? Yeah. 
uh, I think Paradise Valley <laughs> is considered yeah. one, strangely enough. Yeah, and pardon my ignorance, but is this uh, Pinal? Okay. Uh, so, um, and, and again, this is where you can really get into the minutia on some of these programs, but uh, the job training takes into account the average county wage. Um, so being in Pinal County, that will be lower than uh, Maricopa County. So again, can be an advantage uh, to qualifying for that particular program. Anything else? Yes? Uh, grants were mentioned through yes. the presentation that if I applied for a grant, how long would it take me to get um, That's a good question. Uh, <laughs> Some of the grants are awarded uh, on a regular basis. Uh, the FAST grant uh, is awarded um, at the same time every year, uh, and the Innovation Challenge occurs twice a year in the spring and the fall. Um, do you know, did, were the uh, FAST grants, I feel like they're awarded at the beginning of each year. Do you know the time enough, Todd? Top? Yeah, I know it's annually, and I think it's I think it's at the beginning of the year. Um, yes. And in that same vein, uh, we talk about tax credits, but there are other credits, uh, and if certain criteria are met, uh, and I would imagine there's an application fee or whatever if I met those that criteria, and I submitted my application or form of that letter to you. How long would it take me to get those funds? Well, I can tell you that uh, job training. Uh, it, we typically tell people a 30 to 45 day um, processing time uh, and the reason that um, I use that as an example is for that you know how job training was divided into two buckets the net new and the incumbent um, the net new uh, is uh, the net new is specifically the application has to be in approved and signed by both parties uh, in order for the employees to count. So in the example of a company with 50 people hiring 20, they have to get the application for net new for those 20 in approved and signed prior to hiring those 20 people. Um, because if they're on the books by the time uh, that before that application is approved, then they're gonna fall into the incumbent bucket and be reimbursed at a lower amount. So. Um, we try to process that one as fast as possible. Uh, I can tell you that it was uh, a couple weeks or so before Christmas, and I was trying to get one processed before January 1st, uh, and that was going to be a bit of an impossibility. Um, so that's, it's really four to six weeks is the standard line on most of the approvals. Any other questions on the ACA in, in general or? Perfect. I will turn it over to uh, my partner in workforce. I am Christian Hall in the workforce development. As Casey said, we are the state's economic development uh, department per legislative action. We've always been the state's workforce board. So the state workforce board means a federally funded program, Workforce Investment Act, Money from Department of Labor flows down through DES, Department of Economic Security, and out to the local workforce one stops. How many are you, of you f are familiar with the um, Workforce Connections, Gila Pinnell Workforce Connections? Okay, so that's, those are the one stops that we partner with to uh, deliver these services. Um, what I always say is we are both, um, uh, I don't know, can you guys see this? It's, um, we're uh, strategic and we're tactical. So because of the board, there are a lot of initiatives that we're engaged in where we're talking to DES, Department of um, Education, with the Board of Regents, with the state's universities and community colleges to create something called a longitudinal database. So there is some technology involved in the background, but really economic development had asked us, 
how are we going to find out what the workforce pipeline is? And this is one way to measure. It's not perfect, it's not comprehensive, but what it will do is pull information out from every community college, every university around the state to say, bottom line, how many software engineers are we graduating? How many um, civil engineers, how many welders uh, programs? And we can take a look at it to adjust it up or down to ask you know, critical questions about it and analyze it. So that's one of the strategic initiatives that we're involved in. The other thing we're involved in as the state's workforce board, we just rewrote the state's uh, workforce plan that has never been done, well, I'm sorry, it has not been done in 10 years. Um, it was done in um, concert with the workforce directors in the state and some other folks and a consultant that has worked uh, nationwide. Um, the governor took a look at it, loved it, and has adopted it as one of her four pillars in the, she didn't mention it in the presentation, but it's in her plan. Our, so the workforce state plan is the governor's plan for workforce for the state. And the, the biggest change is that instead of the individual being the only client and customer, it's, um, uh, it's business is also the, the client and the customer. Uh, workforce development has always been uh, very kind-hearted towards an individual, but if there's no business, there's no job. So, uh, so that's how that works. Uh, so tactical, that's me. I am the project gal and happy to do it. I like to um, have a, a kind of a big meaty problem that a company has and then apply solutions, apply resources. The tactical means I work with Casey, I work with his colleagues in business expansion, a company is here um, and they want to expand, they're hiring, they're investing in capital. And what do they say? What's their other question, Mayor? Where can I find the people? Where are the people? It's always about the people. And so I come in and I talk about the workforce services, which I'll talk about in a minute. I talk about strategic partnerships, just like Casey does. Who do you need to know? If you are looking, software engineering is actually the um, uh, a really, really high priority for the state right now. Because typically, not always, but typically, a software engineer is a young person, 20 or 30, and their priorities for job, they probably don't have a family yet, probably, and they're looking for fun, they're looking for an adventure, I want to work at Google. And, um, you know, while, you know, Hartford Insurance or, or, you know, Allstate or whatever would gladly hire them for a very good salary, uh, but where are they? So how do we connect those? So we're uh, about to launch into an initiative for that. Um, if a company is attracted to Arizona and they say, I want to move to Maricopa, that's perfect for what I need, then I kind of cast about for um, what, um, what partners would make sense for that company to talk to. So I would definitely hook them up with Central Arizona College, with um, Barbara Valencia and Diana Russell with the Gila Pinal Workforce, any of our community other community colleges that could help, any of the university extensions that are in this area. Um, I did think of something uh, in our strategic partnership. We recently worked with East Valley Partnership. So the members of East Valley Partnership, um, they focus on different industries. One is aerospace and defense. The board of East Valley Partnership said, help us um, address this workforce issue. Where are the talented people? There's you know, some kind of skills gap. They came to us, to ACA, and they go, what's workforce? What's workforce development? We're not sure what that means. And we said, well, not a problem. We'll partner with you. And uh, in partnership, we actually opened up to the state. So in partnership with the East Valley, they came to us with a question. From that question, now we have a full-on state sector strategy partnership, which I'll tell you about in a minute, uh, which simply means industry at the table and tactical partners around, around the outside. Um, we've brought aerospace and defense um, industry. We've brought educational programs to the table separately. We did a facilitated discussion, what works, what doesn't work, what's your perfect world. We're putting everybody together on Valentine's Day on February 14th, and we're going to have some working committees to say, okay, business wants internships, education wants internships. Where are, where's the disconnect? Well, my system doesn't support, great, what do you need to do? Well, my industry, I don't have enough journeymen to, to follow along with an intern or whatever. Well, how can we address that? So it's just putting those people together. 
Uh, so workforce development down below. It is federally funded, as I said, from the Workforce Investment Act. Um, we are about partnership services, training funding. Casey mentioned the state sort of bucket of training funding. This is federal funds. You would connect with your workforce partners, the Gila Pinal and DES, um, to do any kind of an on-the-job training grant, incumbent worker training grant, and um, uh, periodically um, uh, grants come up. And I'll talk about how you can be highlighted, because usually at the end of my presentation, people say, just like you did, how do I get that? How do I, how do I make that happen? Uh, the partnerships often are local workforce area boards, community colleges, um, and community groups in your area that we have uh, access to. Uh, services, we'll have a company say, I need one, I need 250 um, widget makers, or software engineers, or welders, or um, actuaries, whatever it is. We connect them with the workforce services, and we say, uh, just like it, it's a free staffing service, what do you need, what does your employee look like, your perfect employee, we can do um, a job fair for you, we can do uh, special recruiting, targeted recruiting. Uh, Micah Miranda called me, um, I still have never met him, it's only a phone relationship, and he said, Kirsten, I heard that you can help connect me with workforce, we have ultra star theaters here, they wanna do recruiting, what do I do? I don't even know. And I said, not a problem. Who do I talk to? He's like, go. So I connected Ultra Star Theaters with uh, actually DES um, and uh, Kim Rodriguez. They had uh, a specific targeted um, job fair. The workforce staff was there. You remember that. They helped uh, do the paperwork, the background. They were there as staffing. They were enrolling people. And this company was over the moon. They were so excited about that. That's what we do. It can be for ultra star theaters, it can be for a new manufacturing plan, it can be for a new grocery store, whatever that is. And that's tremendous. When I talk to companies and I say this kind of recruiting service, and I actually just talked to an angel investor today who is availing himself of our loan funding program and uh, talked about pinch and pennies, and he said, how can that be free? I don't understand. And so I had to go back again through federally funded, and I said, okay, Bottom line is they get brownie points for helping you. And he goes, okay, I get it. I get it. That's all I needed to know. He just wondered how, because a business model, it doesn't make sense. And, and um, uh, But yet there it is. Uh, we can also do technical assessments and pre-screening at the workforce area. So you have um, a manufacturing facility, and they need to know to make sure that the mechanical aptitude of an individual is up to speed. And if somebody has always been a bus driver and they say, I want to be a widget maker, they might make a fantastic widget maker. They've taken this assessment. Hey, guess what? My mechanical skills are off the charts. Uh, so there you go. So I said training funding. Sector strategy, and I'm going to dazzle you with our colorfuls. Can everybody read this? <laughs> um, I handed this out, and... Um, this is what I, help, I hope to get you um, motivated by and excited by. So all this represents is a sector strategy <coughs> partnership is a collection of industry around the table and the tactical partners. Economic development is there, um, education at all levels from high school through university, community college, the workforce, any other governmental programs, community programs. The key is though that industry is the voice. Uh, sometimes workforce, sometimes education loves to be, you know, the band leader, and we're not. We are not. We are the ones to serve, and industry is there to tell us what they need. Very recently, Gila Pinal convened um, and is beginning to convene a very, very active, very strong sector strategy partnership. First, they decided, and it's with um, some of the economic development partners, and if it's something that you want to join in, uh, you ought to. It is with education. It's with just a, a, a number of people. They've narrowed it down to let's start focusing on manufacturing, on health care, and there's another one that I don't remember what it is. Um, and that simply means that they are going to approach these companies, the leaders in these companies, uh, Abbott Labs is leading it as well. Bring everybody to the table and say, okay, manufacturing, what is it that you need? What do you lack in workforce? What do you lack in other resources? 
and now the people around the table start activating. Well, I need you know a new easement. I don't know for my property, or I'm expanding, and I need the the permitting process to be a little bit easier. It's easier if everybody's at the table. And what's different about this is um, a lot of us are self-propelled, and that's fantastic. And you think I can do this. You know, I can make this happen. I can bring all the resources. We cannot individually, um, from whatever we represent, bring everything and know everything a company needs, and we shouldn't pretend to. So for business's sake, to keep them healthy, bring them to the table, what do they need, what are their points of pain, and then start bringing people in around the table. It keeps people accountable. It gives you a timeline. It, it, it prevents meeting just to meet. It really has some agreed upon outcomes. And so this map represents the active industry partnerships around the state. So what does that mean to you in Maricopa? Well, it's something to aspire to maybe from a tra an attraction standpoint. It's also, um, you can tap into these resources. What if you don't have an industry cluster? What if you have one very important manufacturer? I, I don't know if you do, and I apologize, Mayor. Let's say that you just have one. You're like, well, that's not a cluster. What do we do? Call me and let me plug you into some place that um, maybe you can extract the most benefit for that company from another viable sector partnership. The best thing, and here's the money, the best thing about these is these will attract grants to you. We'll know, we'll know that you're, you're actively engaged in something. If you're, um, if you're talking to companies and you're working on, on um, in medical, let's say the medical field, and let's say a grant comes up that we hear about, we absolutely will make sure that you're plugged in. Um, this is also a vehicle for rural development for those of you that know Keith Watkins that comes out to, to your town and, and to others to bring our rural development grants. Um, this is how we know you're on the map because it really is the power of one, one person really passionate about making a change and bringing some value to the community that uh, just attracts a lot more um, uh, opportunities to you as well. So if you have, if you're thinking of, that there's a cluster of businesses that maybe, and maybe it's retail, maybe it's retail, maybe you really want to make sure your retail employers are well taken care of, or you are you're hearing a little bit over here for those of us who talk to business, you hear the same thing here and then here and here. Let's get everybody to the table and let's solve that problem because it helps everyone. Um, let's see. That is, uh, that's what I've got for, uh, for sector strategy. So we've got a variety of things. We have workforce services. You need to hire one person, let me know, and I can connect um, the city. Maybe, uh, Jackie, I can give you the connection to the workforce um, office so that you can post a job for free, uh, have them collect resumes maybe and sort through them and, and have your pick maybe join in on job fairs or what have you. Um, the sector strategy partnership, for those of you that, are, uh, that um, represent businesses and associations, maybe that's interesting to you. Kind of the point is get involved, plug yourself into what's happening. Um, the economy is slowly coming back to life. It's slowly warming up and we absolutely want Arizona to maximize the benefit. We want every community in Arizona to be the very best that they can be. So call us if you have questions, call us if you have ideas, call us if there's something that you didn't hear that you need, and let's see if we can help you find it. And uh, so I'd like to open it up to any questions you might have about workforce or about AC. Yes? Just a question from the web, please. The funding that was mentioned earlier on the ACA, the state funding, in your workforce program, you said are federal funding, are those in addition to what you just discussed on the incentive program? Actually, it is in a sense so, but just to, to be very clear, the federal program is, if I were going to draw a diagram, it would be, you know, turn the faucet on here and it sort of trickles out across the state. Department of Labor, money goes to DES by formula, Arizona gets X amount. Um, each point of light, if you will, each one stop gets X amount based on their community's actually unemployment statistics. So Gila Pinal has gotten X amount they deliver those services and they spend their budget money according to what they get. So they have the money, I don't have the money for that. What I am is as a navigator to a company. If a company says, you know, everything we just said, it's like, okay, good luck. 
give us a call. And you're like, ah, what do I do? <coughs> so for workforce, I help navigate through that program, and I would plug you into the partner. They spend their money, if you will. Yeah, brings up a second question. Yeah. Maricopa no longer is eligible because of our population. The USDA, USDA agricultural loans. Okay. So my concern is if we suddenly get down the road where people are going for a rural grant, and then suddenly we find that the federal up here is dominating something we're not qualified for. So is that a state application of what's rural and not, or is it a federal application of what's rural? We'll find out for you to, to tell you exactly. I want to say it's what the state designates, but, but here's the thing to do, especially for someone like you, for the mayor, for somebody at the city, call us. If you have any inkling that that's, you have a company that's growing, that wants to apply for it, call us immediately, and we absolutely, any one of us, will plug you into the right answer so that you'll know ahead of time. Okay. Um, but then to your question, how do they, they mix and merge? Let's say you're a company and you've gotten um, OJT funding for your five employees. Um, let's say that you know that over uh, the fullness of time, two years, you're going to hire 15 more people in your tooling and machining shop. Um, and you decide to apply for the new hire funds from the state. You've already got federal program going on, you're spending that money, and you've got um, state new hire. Absolutely, it, it works very, very well. If you have the same 15 that you want to hire and you have federal and state funds, it blends very, very well, and we can help you with that. Could this be a ongoing process? I'm a business owner and I have my business plan and I have a growth rate I want to achieve. And each year I think I might come to the well because I'm going to be adding more staff. Mm -hmm. Is that a continual? It is. So again, two answers. So federal, on the federal program, um, come to the federal program when you need it. You know, as you need it. I'm hiring some new people, what kind of tra and I need to train them. What kind of training funds do you have? So that's one thing that's just on the ad hoc basis. For the state program, it's a two-year projection. If you're um, looking now at two years down the road and you go, I'm, I am pretty sure I'm going to hire 20 people in the next two years. I'm, that's what I'm going to apply for. I think training is going to be X. We have all the forms that you fill out. Here's the training plan, so on and so forth. Um, two years, at the end of two years, it's a reimbursable grant, so you reimburse quarterly according to what you've spent out. Um, at the end of it, you've really only hired 15. That's fine. No, no harm, no foul. It's that money, that uh, money to train 20 people set aside for you. You can do mo no more than 20, but you can certainly do less than 20 if that's what your business, you know, de uh, demanded. So for the state funding for the new hire, it's a projection. And for the federal, it's just on an ad hoc basis. When you need it, you know, uh, go and apply. Using your example, at the end of that two years, I find myself in the same position that most people in the business has grown. Uh, I need more staff. Things are great, and mm -hmm. I want to apply for a grant. Do it. Yeah. Yep. And Absolutely. Clarify, you can, um, in, in the example of the 20 people over two years, and, and you dedicated or you dedicated those dollars. Uh, if you reach the 20 new additional people in a year, you can actually close out that grant, apply for a new one, uh, and say, oh, I'm gonna do 20 more. And so you're not penalized if you don't reach it, and you still have the ability to capture more just by closing out the grant and applying for a new one should you exceed that 20. And what we have for you are consulting services, as it were. So for you, let's just say you have some really specific um, questions, some specific needs coming up. Call us. Call Casey. Call me. We'll connect you with the, um, the financial manager for that particular program. They'll walk you through and, and advise you as to how uh, best to apply. It's not a competitive grant. It's meant to be, we want to award it to you. We want it we want you to be successful in your application. So call us, ask ahead of time if you think you're um, going to have a company applying for something or if you're applying, and then we'll make sure that you get as much as you can, that you maximize. Mm -hmm. How about folks that get involved with the SBA, that we give them grants for our money or whatever, how would it affect those people might be with you? Not at all. Not at all. Now, not at all for some of the, the tax incentives and for the grants I'm talking about. For the loan programs, I don't even pretend to know. That would be, I don't know. You can still have both. Uh, in some situations, the, we have companies that might have uh, an SBA loan, uh, and it could be that we can partner with the bank to create a more favorable uh, loan situation, uh, whether it's an interest rate or uh, terms uh, and in some cases we might uh, they might transfer out of an, an SBA loan into a, a program with us but 
they definitely don't preclude each other from working together. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I'm just uh, basically measure its success. How do you know whether you're doing well or not? I was just going to say that. That's great. Your $5 is on the table. Um, I was going to say that we're, we're incented by the carrot or the stick method. No. Our management is such that our business board that we have, and, and we love it, it's a, it's a great way to thrive, is to say, here's your goal. And I think it's 75,000 jobs over five years? 75,000 uh, in five years, but now it's four years. Um, X amount of capital expenditures, I don't know what that is. So Casey, certainly, that is his job day and night, is to beat the bushes for companies that are expanding, they're spending money on their companies, they're hiring people. I also have a responsibility, a lesser number than Casey, but I, ha I have a number that I have to meet. Um, that's how we know how we're, how we're being successful. And it's interesting because we have, um, it's interesting. The people that are hired there, they're all about, and I hope this message has been conveyed, we're all about making a company healthy and giving them what they want. We really are program people, but we're out there and we have to meet the numbers. So we're talking to economic development, we're talking to mayors, we're talking to whoever, business associations, that can be the word on the street and the feet on the street. Tell us when you know of a company expanding, um, let us, you know, please, we're the government, we're here to help. Let us, uh, let us give you money, right? That's the, that's the joke, that's our job. And we're measured how successful at the end of the day, it's really simple. Can you imagine how many people on our board, a dozen, 17? Anyway, very serious faces sitting around the room. How many people were hired? Oh, at what salary? At what salary? Uh, how much capital expenditure? And now we have a certified letter that we ask companies to sign. Did we help you do this? So you qualify, let's say, for the job training grant. Would you sign this letter that says that, that Kirsten Hall helped you get that? Uh, so that? So that there can be no, we're working with your money, with my money, with taxpayer money, so that when taxpayers come up and go, come back to us and say, what have you done? We can say we've brought this many new jobs to Arizona at this level wage they have poured this much money into Arizona and um, and then there is you know some crazy math you can do that say that says how that also increases communities like this the um, you know the ex the expenditures and um, the consumer products and that kind of thing so that's how we're measured that's our success it, are those metrics but truly I think how we're how we succeed is when we have a company say I had no idea now I've taken advantage and I'm so successful. We um, collect stories, if it, as it were, and we're so excited. I have, I'm very corny, I have a big uh, blue foam finger number one, and when we get that kind of a success, um, we sing and dance, and we wave the foam finger, because that is success to us. So I know, um, so we're, so we're both minded, but at the end of the day, the board's like, numbers. The achieved training can be a really elusive item to measure. How do you measure what you've done? Industry recognized certification. So for the federal program. On the state program, you've done a training plan. You have implemented, uh, you've said this is when I'm going, this is how and when I'm going to check mark when this is done. So it's simply like, I'm going to teach this individual how to drive a forklift, how. Um, uh, by this manual and by a journeyman when after 72 hours, I'm making it up, 72 hours of training and then uh, what will be your success? The OSHA forklift, um, you know, certified forklift lift driver check. So that's, that is how the training plan looks when you've applied the state. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's a form and you don't get your money until you, till you fill it out, yeah. Pretty detailed. <laughs> Very detailed. Very detailed. Let me give you a scenario. Let's say we're a licensing company, mm -hmm. and we've, we've got a piece of equipment that we need to manufacture, but we don't want to get into the manufacturing side. Of the group. So we go to a company, <coughs> a company here that fits our bill, can build it, and says, I don't have any employees to do this. I'm going to have to hire more employees. Could they come in and get that grant? Sure. 
Oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. So you're saying that um, your... Um, we own intellectual properties on some equipment, right. and we, we were kind of tossing up whether do we want to get the manufacturing side of this or do we just license it out to the manufacturer? I see. Oh, I understand what you're saying, okay. That, yeah. That's a good question, and we've come across that. Uh, I think um, one of the examples was Harley Davidson uh, relocated a, a manufacturing facility or proving ground or something up in Canaan, I believe. Um, and that was going to create X number of jobs. And what ended up happening was Harley Davidson created about half of those jobs as full time Harley Davidson employees. However, they contracted uh, for some of the labor. So it actually is up to the contract company to say we've got you know X number of new employees. So it's the company who's really paying the paycheck. Yeah. Right. Uh, but we we can help. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Yeah. Another example I'll tell you. Uh, there's a company that um, that trains companies on CAD software. You know that kind of engineering software. They conduct the training. They are a great mouthpiece for our job training program because. They can go to all these engineering companies, construction companies, and say, hey, you know, we want you to use our training software, but if you don't otherwise know, the ACA has a job training program where you can get 50, 75% of those training costs from the road. So that happens as well. Yeah. And most of our um, programs are, we kind of go by employer of record. So whoever the employer of record is, is how we do that. But certainly, it's a service you provide by telling your, your partner about it. And you look like the rock star because you've brought those services. So you mentioned GPEC. We work very closely with GPEC. They've been around a very long time to do attraction. Um, and uh, we, yeah, we, we just work very, very closely with them. We want them out there. And they bring us in on projects and vice versa. Um, they have a phenomenal data and a marketing team, and they've done a very deep dive nationwide. So, um, you know, we do that. Yeah. Yep. Do you have an internal audit process which would show whether or not you're getting scammed? Oh, yes, we do, yeah. Uh, I was, so separately, I was thinking of our financial um, programs. That's been audited twice. One as an independent audit, ACA itself required. And then uh, the board required it right after we had one. They said, well, let's do it again by a different company. And that came out clean as a whistle. They were very, very impressed. So, um, but for companies to get the funding, absolutely. We have a, a great team of, um, that take a very, very sharp look at the applications. Well, and some of the, I mean, if you kind of go through all those programs I went through, uh, you know, the total of available dollars might be $250 million. However, that money is not all coming from the ACA. Uh, specifically, uh, the tax credits, uh, that money is really the Arizona Department of Revenue. So uh, we administer the program. Uh, if somebody comes and applies for a quality job, uh, quality jobs tax credit, uh, they're going to submit their free application to us. We're going to go through it. Then they're going to submit all the documentation uh, that they hire the jobs. Uh, that they spend the money, uh, and we have a form, and, and we approve that. Then they'll go, when they file their tax return, uh, they are going to say, hey, we should get you know, qualified for X, X number of quality jobs tax credits. But at the end of the day, the Department of Revenue can go back and audit them uh, for the, the same thing. And they're the ones that actually administering that money. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's there's a couple of levels of uh, checks and balances. Checks and balances. Mm -hmm. Great questions. I'm glad you guys are so engaged. And if there's something that comes up um, when you go back to your office or later in the day, if it has to do with a business and growing, call us and just ask. And if we don't know. We'll ask Cheryl Lopez, who's in the small business area, and she's going to know. Okay. Thank you so much for inviting us. We appreciate it.